So in a commodity type business, there's only two ways to do it. You either lower your price, right? right Race which to the bottom. unfortunately, there's no more for them to go. Yep. Or you create a different and unique offer. guys, welcome back to The Six. Uh, Sandy Sarami here with the incomparable Scott Joseph, CEO of JNL Marketing. Giving a little a shout out to my friend Alexa. What's up, Alexa? Um, and again, the place is buzzing still here. Tables are full. Uh, Got to be something going on here. You should be part of this. Uh, you should be sitting at the next table, and we're going to talk a little bit about the next table uh, feature that we're going to be doing very shortly uh, coming up. But, you know, when we left off before with Scott, we were talking about the fact that JNL is not just uh, an event-based marketing company. There's so much more uh, to the picture and to the puzzle. And a lot of what you uh, do that differentiates you from every other company out there has to do with what you learned along the way in using data to validate or invalidate some of the campaigns and, and uh, success and failure that you experienced along the way. Yeah, I think that when I was mentioned earlier, we got lucky. I never sat down and just came up with some big long strategy that, mm -hmm. wow, this strategy was the right one, look what it did for us. We learned kind of what was working along the way. Now when I look back, I see three things that really separate us from everything, everybody else. Mm -hmm. Our ability to really dive into the data, and I'll, I'll talk a little bit about that, mm -hmm. but our marketing strategy and our campaign management. So let's take it back to when all we did was events for a second, right? right? I can remember there was nothing worse than when I was sitting have to call dealers on that Monday, <laughs> right? The Monday after an Doing event. This. Like, yeah, yeah, some Doing dealers were ecstatic. Oh. And so, so we'd be, I'd have the, fortunately I'd have a promotion coordinator there, right? right? And so I'd already have an idea of the temperament and or the success right. or incomplete success at the time. Okay. And so I'd be calling these stores back and some calls go great. And then some calls you're getting punched right in the nose, right? right? And so I sat there and I said to myself, all right, I need something that can help me defend myself. Right. I want to come with data. And I had these coordinators there. I said, so I started having them tally up and summarizing basically a Word document. I, I remember the, the sheets. They put Correct. them all together, the carbons, and we... I think it was called notes. breakdown analysis yeah, yeah. or something at the time. Yep. And so I would then I thought, okay, now... When I call these dealers, when I have all this traffic that I can show them, they can't say this to me right. anymore. And so one thing I learned very quickly, no matter how great those numbers look, if a dealer didn't sell cars, he's not buying into... No question. Those calls didn't improve, they actually got worse. You know, it's funny, I talk about that all the time with advertising and marketing agencies in this business, and I say, you know, they're held to an unfair standard. And I think you and I have talked about that as well, where you get measured on the actual sales, and truthfully, your role is to drive traffic. Correct. Qualify traffic to the store. And, and dealers and GMs, if you're out there listening right now, um, I'm going to put it on you. It's incumbent upon you. I speak from a dealer perspective. It's incumbent upon us to be able to handle the traffic coming through the door the right way. And so kudos to you for developing a way that gave empirical data that said, hey, we did our job, but it still doesn't make the messaging any easier for them to digest. No, because then they just dug in deeper, and what ended up happening, the calls even got worse, yeah. because I'm fighting one way, trying to prove them wrong, mm -hmm. um, and that just that's horrible sales mm -hmm. uh, and, process. And, and your intent was to help grow their business. I mean, that Correct. is the perspective you're coming from. I want to help them grow their business. Correct. And so I sat here, and I've got all this data that's not on just Word documents. Mm -hmm. It's useless. And so I was fortunate I had a brother-in-law who was good at uh, creating and architecting database. Okay. And he created a, a nice live working database and we back entered all that data in. And then what we did is we just set up a process that anytime an event would run, we would punch it in. And what was great about it is we literally could identify or we isolated all the elements of a campaign. I love it. What days they're right. running, right? It all had its own data field, right? Okay. The headlines. And all this was coded. Different headlines, different offers, different hooks. Smart. The obviously the data the list that was being targeted and used. Geographically where was it gone? What it allowed me to do was 
I could literally do A B test and I could sit there and say, all right, every time we run this offer with this headline, I want to compare it to everything being the exact same, except I want to flip the headline to this. Right. And then what the, that was critical because if you can't isolate down to a single variable, you don't know the you don't know what caused the either the increase or the or it's the negative the effect, right? Between winning and losing. Correct. At the end of an event. And so now my phone calls changed. More importantly, how we started selling changed. Right. And so when we talk about one of the things that separates us is data, it goes beyond people in this industry tend to think when they hear data, all right, they, they make it just who's the target audience, right? right. Data is beyond that. It's the insights you gather about what messaging is right, when the timing's right. You know, and so what hooks work best? You're measuring and you're optimizing every I mean, element. What part of the country you're in, right? Certain messaging works in one part of the country, doesn't right. work in another. And that, that tool allowed me, that database, I could filter it however I wanted to. Right. So it was a game changer for us because it really helped us on the data side. And from then on, based on whatever the, the client's needs were, I was able to sit there and recommend, not on gut instinct, but on what the marketplace basically had voted on. Right. And I, I knew I could go in confident that the event was going to produce better than anything sure, else that they were going to try. I knew that their percentage or their, I guess, their their uh, success rate was going to be much higher going with those recommendations you know versus not. It's predictive analytics. At Correct. the end of the day, it's predictive analytics. Uh, another buzzword today. I mean, it's buzzwords galore. But, you know, it's funny because one of the offshoots of you using data and technology to validate or invalidate what you were doing became a great tool for you to help your dealer clients with as well, I'm assuming. Correct? Oh, well, so you had the data thing. I already had the promotion coordinator, right? Right. So the other issue we were having early on was I'd have some sales in the... I created that because I had some sales that were great and I had other sales that were in complete success, yeah. you know? And so I would sit there and think, why is it that no matter where this general manager goes, every time wow. he runs an event with us, oh, yes. <laughs> it kicks butt, you know? And so I wanted to know why certain dealers always had high levels of success, no matter how good the marketing actually right. produced. If we pulled in a half percent, one percent, two percent, they still sold cars. Right. And then there were other stores that we could have these monster turnouts and all the data was saying this should have been really good because right. it's the right quality of traffic as well, but they weren't selling cars, right? And we can say and sit there and say, well, he's just a bad GM or he's just a bad sale, he has bad sales managers, mm -hmm. but that doesn't give me more business at JL. Right. And so what ends up happening is I literally traveled the country with all of our best clients. I wanted to figure out, all right, what is it that these guys do differently that everyone else just isn't doing? Right. So if there was something that we could bring to the table, right, that to help these stores, because for me, the easier my call was on Monday, uh, no the more the, the faster the business grew. Absolutely. And so sign them up for the next sale. I mean, that's easy. Correct. And so we sat there, and I was able. I didn't want. I didn't want to just come up with a bunch of a grab bag of ideas. I didn't want to sit there and say, "Hey, maybe you ought to try this and try that." So I found seven things at the time, and right. it's it's grown a little bit since then. But um, I found seven very specific things that all these dealers that were successful, mm -hmm. they did it every time. Yep. And so what we did was we created a basically a playbook. I think it was called Sales, Sales Atlas, Atlas at the time. Yeah, we and we it. would call these stores seven to ten, ten days prior and really dive in to, to what it takes to be successful during these events. Right. And so not only were they selling more cars, but their traffic increased. And the reason their traffic increased is because they were calling previous customers. This is before the BDC. Yeah, of course. Right? They were calling previous customers, word of mouth advertising help, but the biggest thing that happened was when they showed up for the event, there was a side benefit that we didn't expect, and that was the entire team was prepared and excited for it uh -huh. because they were building up to it. Of course. And a lot of these guys were selling cars before the event even started. And so what ended up happening is if you're a dealer or a sales manager, right, and you've already made money on the event, how many times you go in, 
and, and if you've already made money on the event, you go in a lot more confident no and your question. attitude's better. And so, and same with the salespeople. And so, how many times have we showed up for an event and we sit there and, you know, we got our fingers crossed. I hope people show up. I hope that never happened anymore with mm -hmm. us. And so it comes down to the marketing strategy, right? The data and the, and the, the campaign management. And as I look back, we were so geared in on that, mm -hmm. that when we moved into digital, the same rules applied for us. Right. All digital because that's all we knew. It's a it's a different channel. Yeah. And so we still knew we had to be better at everyone on the data side. Mm -hmm. We still had to have a better marketing strategy. And we had to have because that's the, all we knew. That's what worked for us. Yeah. Right? And so it's carried over no matter what product we have. Well, you know, it's funny, I think back now over the course of the last couple of weeks as you and I uh, have really had a number of conversations. Uh, we came back from Grant's event, which was awesome. we both enjoyed it, thought it was outstanding, the scope was incredible. Uh, he does what he does like nobody else does it. Yep. Right? I mean he is he is certainly that. But one of the things that we talked about, you and I, was you left that event saying to yourself, what? I gotta get a lot better. Yeah. It was it was a little motivation and inspiration, almost taking me back to dad saying, You'll be back in three months. He's saying I had a lot I of reflection. After the 10x, I had a lot of self-reflection, mm -hmm. self-reflection, and what I realized was, and I go back to early in my career, right? I was all in. I, I have to tell you, we, I took our sales team up. We lost a big deal in the in the mid to early 90s, mm -hmm. and it would have launched us immediately into another thing. And right. and it was a Toyota deal, and they didn't choose us because at the time they thought we were too small. And I remember thinking, it's not that we're too small, we just don't know how to sell these people. <laughs> All right, so yeah. I took the team and the whole company from sales, and we went through literally two weekends, four days each, nine to 12 at night. All right, bumper to bump, day, I mean, bell to bell. Oh, yeah. And pounded them through the Anthony Robbins, and we bought in so much, then I bought the rights to be able to facilitate that okay. myself. I want these guys, these guys had to do this training. I made them come down to do this training, the same one, literally every month for almost two straight years. <laughs> you know what we call that? They almost revolted. Yeah, but that's a commitment. <laughs> that's a commitment. And so they couldn't listen to the same stories anymore. And so, you know, but we got better. And but what, the point to that is that's, not that's about the training. conditioning, uh, Scott. Like, you know, as much as they, they may have revolted two years later, they needed to go through that two years to help you get your team where you wanted to go. That's right. It's, it's part of the, the growth that they had to go through, and it's repetitive. So, and, and the reason we got on this, right, is not about the training, but through uh, Tony Robbins, I got exposed to Jay Abraham. Mm -hmm. All right, great marketer. And so when I went to 10X, I started doing this self-reflection thinking, look at the growth I had when I was doing my person when I was really focused on personal development right improving and learning from an Anthony Robbins a Jay Abraham type yep. guy right and then where I have stagnated in my career is when I do not do those things and so what I no loved question. about 10x was they're teaching all the same things I learned but through different channels and it's almost like it's on steroids now the digital piece becomes the accelerator right, correct for us correct and so I don't want to say a recommitment but it really energized me and woke me up um, basically in this sense that I've dove back in for myself from a personal development mm -hmm. standpoint and what I didn't realize was the side benefits that came from that and that is this I've always considered myself pretty innovative right. But when you're doing your personal development stuff and you're working on you, you become more innovative. You're more creative. Yeah. You're even more passionate. Heightened awareness, right? Your sensory. Correct. I mean, you're, you're picking up on things that you weren't picking up I on I thought previously. I was all in. I look back now, 
I wasn't close. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we went through this period where we started landing some of these national account stuff like with different manufacturers mm -hmm. and you get a little fat and happy, right? Yeah, no, and, listen, and every one of us is suspect and correct. And, you know, we can fall victim to that. And then you go through, and then, you know, we went through our pivot with digital and stuff like that. And you've got some people that don't want to go along with that ride. Mm -hmm. And and so there's, it creates dynamics I never had to deal with. Right. It, right. And then all of a sudden, I go right back into a, at a much higher success level, but really it's the same type of rut that I could have done when I was selling cars. My question is back to the beginning, though. And it goes back to the personal development. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, it's just like, it explodes it's, it's again. It's the key that unlocks every one of our potential, yeah. right? And I don't care where you are in life. Uh, by the way, if you're 50, 60 years old out there watching this, like, you can start anytime again. Like, you get to start over again and maybe again. Yeah. It doesn't make a difference. And if you're a youngster out there, um, that's the lesson. Like, pick up a book, get in front of an audio or a video program, plug something into the two holes on the side of your head, and start to learn. <laughs> Because as you said, it inspired you. But I think the other thing, and I don't know, because I've not walked the halls of J L, but I will at some point come out and visit. I bet you right now we'll that do some bourbon and do some horses. We'll do some bourbon and some horses, no <laughs> doubt. Uh, but I bet right now there's people walking around J and L that are inspired as a result of what they see you doing. Like you doing hope. something different. I hope so. No, I would I would say I'd bet dollars to don't on some because you're not a guy that is jumping in front of the camera before 10x. It's, it's, very, un it's very uncomfortable for me. Yeah, but see, and I think you do a great job, and I keep telling you that. Well, I'm encouraging you to continue to do it. I went through a period, I, I think, and I, 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 you know, I'm on LinkedIn, I'm pretty active on LinkedIn, and so uh, I saw somebody post one of my connections, and it resonated with me because I feel the same way, and that is, I went through a period where I didn't really want to make it, I didn't want the perception that I was trying to make it about me. Mm -hmm. And then part of the, the, the problem with that is when you're not out there and you're not actively pursuing things and pushing and grabbing the attention for your business, you tend to, you lose a little bit of that, that edge. Oh, no question. Right? Not. And so, uh, and I had to just get over the fact that it's still not about me. Mm -hmm. I'm just promoting what, what, what we do. Well, I think, so, again, you go back to... I'm getting slightly more comfortable with it. No, but listen, <laughs> and, but here's the thing. Like, we were talking about when, we, when the cameras stopped rolling, you know, a, a great piece that we talked about. We said, we talked about that, that um, uh, limiting your level, level of empowering belief, oh, yeah. and then all of a sudden you allow it to kind of slow down the actions and activities you know you should be doing, and that's the exact opposite of what you should be doing. That speaks right to you right I, now. Like, absolutely. Double yeah. down on the videos. And I take this... The, this is all from Anthony Robbins right mm -hmm. here, and that is when he talks about empowering beliefs, right? And so you can either start from one or two places. You can either start from the belief that you have, and it's either going to be an empowering belief or a limiting belief. And so when you think about uh, back when I started selling cars, I had an empowering belief. Mm -hmm. And that belief was there's no way I can fail. Right. I don't need school, and I'm going to... Dad, I'm gonna kick your ass in this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. And then, because of that belief, right, you tend to take, you're, you have a better attitude, you tend to take more action, yep. right? And the results are there. The other place to start is with the results. And that's a dangerous place to start because if the results aren't there, it can oh. shape the wrong belief system. No and so when you're selling cars and I'm first starting out and I'm young and I'm inexperienced and I'm getting punched in the nose nonstop, I started letting the results shape my belief and my empowering belief changed to really a limiting belief. Mm -hmm. And so I, I think um, for me it has to start with the belief system and it's got to be real, it can't be a manufactured mm -hmm. one. You know, it's, it's got to be... It's not easy to do always. It isn't, but I'm not going to give, and Tony Robbins, you're phenomenal, but I'm not going to give him the credit. See, for each and every one of us in this world, it's up to us. He can show it to us, but it's up to you to really take action and Correct. believe yourself. Like, yep. Tony can't believe for you, can't believe for no. me or anybody else. You've got to believe in it yourself. And, and I'll go back to what I was saying before, like double down on the videos because you come from a perspective of wanting to help your dealers. It's not about you, it's about, sure it's about growing your business. Come on. We well, that was a game changer for us. So, 
go back to that data the, with the response analysis, right? When it was about protecting me, mm -hmm. it had the opposite impact that I wanted. And when I finally got over that and didn't make it about me, and I said, how can I use this to just have better events at the time, right? It was a game changer for us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we talked about that. The you know, conversations were better. You changed, the, you changed the context and perspective of the conversation. You changed the results. Correct. Right? And that's, that's the lesson, by the way. You know, change the context, you'll change the results yeah. that you see. And, and you know, I, I, I'm a fan. You know that. Because, I've, you know, we've been back and forth over the course of the last, I don't know how many years. As a, as At a, least 15. Yeah, Maybe no doubt. longer. But really over the course of the last few months, where I've been watching you, right? I watch a certain people out there, I'm watching the marketplace because of the success that they have and because of the kind of person that they are. I'm excited for what's going to happen for you and J&L over yeah. the course of the next year or two. Yeah. Like, I can't wait to see where you take this because... Well, we got a few big announcements coming here. No, I'm soon. sure you do. Well, you, <laughs> I hope you'll break a few on One, the I, I know when this is airing, so I know this is already done. So, yep. you know, uh, from a digital standpoint, we just signed with Shell Oil. Oh, good so, for you, bro. That's, a, that's, uh, that's a big deal for us. It yeah. opens up a lot of other doors. Um, Tiny we've been, company, we've been, Shell. Right? Tiny yeah, it's, it's, uh, it says a lot for our... So it says a lot about our digital team. Yeah. And so what's great about our digital, at least for me, selfishly, not about the revenue and all that other stuff, but it's, it's the first team that I've got where I feel like I have to rely more on them, yeah. all right, versus them relying on me. Yeah. And I love that. Yeah, no question. It's a good place to be in. Uh, as, as long as you're open to that, right? And no, so no question. I've got some very smart people that help us on that digital side. And uh, I don't know. you know what? There's a if you would have asked me two years ago if our digital was going to be in the spot it's in today, I would have said no way. Right. Yeah. Well, those pleasant surprises. But yeah. you know, the word that came to mind just now, as as I'm sitting across from you, was like. As you describe that, it's limitless. Like the potential for oh. JNL is now limitless. Yeah. Right? You want to talk about an empowering belief system. When you believe that the team you have creates levels of opportunity that were not even um, things that you considered two years ago, it becomes limitless in terms of what the potential is for you. Yeah. And, and I, I'm excited to have a front row seat. And, uh, you know, at the end of the day, I, I learn as I'm watching you. Right? And I learn as I'm watching some of the other folks that are willing to put themselves out there. You're going through that discomfort of putting yourself in front of the camera. Yeah. But, you know, again, we talked about the book that I sent you. Um, looking at it from the customer's perspective and, and every story that you tell from the customer's perspective, every video that you do from the customer's perspective is, I think, what attracts them to wanting to do more business with you. And that's what brings a shell to the table. Yeah. Right? Coming well, at it from their perspective. Well, I go back to why, and so there's another big announcement coming too. That I cannot say here yet. <laughs> but um, why did they choose us, right? And so I sit back and I think about it, and you really analyze because you know when you're in these pitches, you recognize what grabbed them, right? Mm -hmm. And it goes right back to the data, the marketing strategy, and the campaign management. No question. And so. You know, now what we do about the data, in w whether it's in digital or a, differ a different product, might be different. Mm -hmm. But it's still, I'm still swimming in that ocean, so to speak. Yeah, does no that doubt. make sense? Yeah, of course it does. Um, so, yeah. Well, nothing but the best uh, to come from you guys moving forward. Um, if you were to leave the guests uh, today with one thought in terms of what's driven your success over the course of your career, and something that maybe somebody is just starting out. Uh, needs to focus on, or somebody that's going through a career change, maybe again, yeah. uh, or for the first time, what's one thing that has been a real driver for success? For I, I think it would be the belief system. Um, from a, from a, for me personally, uh, and I think for anybody, I think it's their belief system and their work ethic. Okay. Having that. Got to have the hustle, and you got to, and you got to go all out on it, yeah, right? The G Street hustle, by the way. That's right. Variety. And so, from a product standpoint or what I'm offering, it's all about your offer. And I know dealers struggle with that right now because they can only, I mean, in the end, they can all sell them for the same amount of money. That's right? exactly right. And so uh, you can only discount so far. So in a commodity type business, there's only two ways to do it. You either lower your price, right? right Race which to the bottom. unfortunately, there's no more for them to go. Yep. Or you create a different and unique offer 
And so when I look at what we talk about with our products, whether it was a, the coordinator, right, mm -hmm. or that, that book and that uh, uh, the prepping work we did in advance or the data work that we did, that made us different. Mm -hmm. And that's what I mean by lucky. I didn't sit there and say, I need to be different. I just knew I wanted to have better conversations with dealers and I wanted their events to work better. And that's, so I look that's back the now. the lesson for your dealers right now is that, you know, they've got to do the exact same thing. They you have know, to be different. Do as you've done. They've got to be different. They've got to give folks a reason, a real reason to do business with them over and above price. Correct. Because they can go up and down the street. You speak to experience. you got three Honda stores. That's right. That, that do very, very well. Uh, you have to have that unique selling proposition. And I, I'm going to go back to the, the point I made about culture before. You know, what are the three words as a dealer that you want your employees and your customers to use when they describe an experience in your store? And that's how you start to build culture. Map everything you do to that. Yep. Because the commoditization of our business started long ago, yep. and all the internet did was accelerate that. Correct. So, you know, it's it's up to you, Mr. Dealer, Mr. GM, or Mrs. Dealer, Mrs. GM, uh, to do what you need to do to create a differentiating factor in your business. Um, I want to thank you, bro. I mean, you came uh, all the way awesome. in from Louisville, Kentucky. Yeah. Um, I, I can't tell you, that meant the world to me. The fact that you said you would come in and do it, uh, was validation for us at the six. Because I'm glad we did it here. I yeah, like no it. Question. Yeah. No question. I'm, I'm glad you came. Uh, and listen, for those of you out there that are watching on YouTube, leave some comments down below. Let us know what you think. Um, hit us up on Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Snapchat. Scott's on all those platforms as well. Connect to Scott. We don't run the meter. You got a question, uh, you got a comment, we want to hear it. But for now, we're going to say goodbye to you from the Bakari Grill of in Washington Township, New Jersey. Thank you, my man. Appreciate, Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Thank you. Good man. Yep. We're out.